Hoop ballers. Let's talk about your balls. Yep, your balls in the area around them. Let's talk about manscaped.com. Go there and use promo code HOOPBALL20, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L-2-0. Use the promo code and go check out all the tools they have of trimming the hedges and taking care of your lawn. Like the Lawn Mower 3.0 with a built-in LED light to help you get into those dark thigh crevices on the inner parts. Also, the Gooch. It is hard to get to the Gooch if you can't see it. So use the LED light with the anti-tugless technology on the razor. Full, long battery life. Then check out the Weed Whacker. Bring that out of the shed. Use it on your shrubs. Cut down what you need down to bare minimum if you need to. It's got a nice anti-tugless technology just like the Lawnmower 3.0. It's also got a lithium battery. And best news of all, these things are waterproof. So that way you can do it in the shower and take care of business in the cleanest way possible. Hoopball20 is the promo code that's going to get you free shipping as well as 20% off. I recommend using it. I recommend getting the complete care kit with your free shipping and your 20% off. Spend a little extra, get a lot more. There's a good care kit there for us gentlemen. Face scrub, shampoo, ball treatment, and the area that surrounds our balls. I believe there's even a pair of underwear in there for our balls. So yeah, that's going to conclude the talk about our balls. Now let's talk about bets. MyBookie.ag is where all the hoop ballers take care of their winnings and where we place all of our wagers that we post in our article in the wager pass, as well as our free plays and our Discord chats. Yes, MyBookie.ag. Use promo code HOOPBALL, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L. Let them know that we sent you. Hell, specifically type in my name. I want them to know. But most importantly, you got to let them know what podcast that is. And it is Today in Sports Betting. You let them know that we sent you. And then we, as a family, get to grow. And then we get to set you up to reap more benefits. And that is what's important to us because we are here to help you win money. And that is why we recommend my bookie. Their slogan is bet, win, get paid. And it's quite simply that easy. Use Bitcoin to get going. That's a high recommendation of VM Center at Vince Miracle, our guy. It's a recommendation of me. It's so easy. Dan Bespris, the podfather, Aaron Bruski, the godfather. They get in there. They get going with Bitcoin. They get their money in and out. And it's easy peasy. Who balls the promo code? Use that. Let them know that we sent you. MyBookie.ag. Bet, win, get paid. Now, as a podcast, we have your balls and your bets covered. And without further ado... We have today in sports betting. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hoop Baseballers! Welcome back to another episode of Today in Sports Betting. I'm your host, Devin Ellington, at D-A-L-E-007 on Twitter. Also find the show over at Hootball Gaming. But the motherboard, and this is where you got to go, you got to go to hoop-ball.com. This is a hoop-ball.com presentation, and that is where you find all the goodies. Tons of free content, up-to-the-minute health tickers for our NBA Transaction news, got all the information you need to win your leagues. Go ahead and jump on the Fantasy Pass if you would like. Premium content is great. 33 cents a day gets you the wager pass. That's less than a cup cup of coffee. So check us out there and make sure to keep your eyes and ears peeled for everything to come. We've got a lot of new cappers in the uh, ranks here. We're covering MMA, golf, hockey, soccer. 
Uh, soccer just started back up in the thick of it. Troy's been taking care of that for us. And hey, and then stuff like this happens. Um, if you keep a keen eye on the show, uh, you get great shows like we're going to have today. We're going to have a very special guest, um, a phenomenal talent within the betting industry that I'm very excited personally for, just someone that their work uh, speaks volumes to me, and I really look up to their uh, numbers and the crunching that they do for sports betting. Um, as I said, come and join us. So check us out. Join us. Uh, I'm excited. So without further ado, I'm going to stop the long drawn out intro. Pre-recorded the promos and the hoop ball promo codes. So that way we didn't have to talk about it a ton right here. More of Mr. Joe Osborne of oddshark.com at JTFO lowercase z on Twitter. Joe, thank you so much. And welcome to Today in Sports Betting. This is an honor. Thank you. Hey, Devin. No, it's, uh, it's an honor for me. I'm happy to be on with you. Yeah, uh, just the time that I'm sure you had to carve out for this. I'm very appreciative of it. The Odd Shark staff has just been great with uh, Hootball and Today in Sports Betting. I told you, you know, G-Dog was on the show. Absolutely. Harry's a, a two-time champ now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Gas Gagnon. Uh, you know, uh, Pam Maldonado joined at the very beginning of the shutdown. We talked some Big 12 football. So um, really, really glad to just have so many uh, personalities and talents that I look forward to uh, the work of in the sports betting industry, like I said. So this is going to be a little vanity for me and just selfishness, just having you on the show. I'm just going to appreciate it more so than, well, most of the listeners probably, but at least I'll be honest about that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy to be on, like I said, and we, we do have an awesome crew uh, G Dog and I actually went to journalism school way back in the day, so him and I have been good buddies for for well over a decade. So it's pretty cool that him and I get to work together now, which is awesome. And uh, you know, it's great to watch. I'm sure, a lot of your listeners can relate. You you uh, transition into a, a little bit of the betting side as well, so it's very cool for me to be working with one of my best buddies. Yeah, that is that is a really cool way to look at it. And uh, honestly, I, I didn't know that. So that's a really cool connection to have there. And uh, just the awesome more, you know, odd shark insight I get from having you all on the show. So um, I know we're, you know, we're going to talk a lot about odd shark and everything. But we also what I like to do with the guests that I have on the show is I like to talk about them quite a lot, you know, let them talk about sure. themselves. Um, you know, so, but, you know, it wasn't always odd shark, right? You know, it just, uh, you had to start somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, once again, something I think that some of the listeners can relate to when you're a little kid, you know, uh, your dream job is playing a specific sport or something like that. For me, I wanted to be second base for the Toronto Blue Jays because when I was a kid coming up, uh, that's when the Blue Jays went back to back and won the World Series. I was a big Roberto Wallemar fan. Then kind of reality kicks in once you get a little bit older. And like, yeah, I'm not very good at baseball, you know, to be playing at the professional level anyways. And then, you know, you see the guys on Sports Center and stuff like that. And with me, it kind of clicked. I said, well, wouldn't that be a really cool job, you know, something that I love anyways and getting to, you know, work in that industry. So from there, that brought me to do uh, study broadcast journalism in college. And that was a, a two-year program where you learn everything from the TV side, the radio side of things, storytelling. You know, it's not exactly specific to, to sports, but it kind of teaches you about how the news works and things like that. So I studied that. Then I worked in radio for a year. I didn't really like it so much. So I decided that I need to supplement my education. And I went back and got an advanced diploma in public relations. And that's something that kind of really helped with my with my writing ability. And I still kind of had the dream of getting in uh, working in sports, but it wasn't easy. I discovered, you know, my expectations as a young guy, uh, you, you know, I didn't really have my expectations in check, I guess. So I bounced around a bunch of different marketing jobs 
and things of that nature. And on the side, uh, I did a blog called What Up Sports. And uh, it's a blog that not a whole lot of people read, to be completely <laughs> honest. Uh, my buddies read it. You know, I posted on my Facebook page and stuff like that. And it was everything from uh, fantasy sports, mainly fantasy baseball and fantasy football, to uh, MMA matchmaking. I always, I'm a big UFC guy. So after every UFC, I would say, okay, who this guy should fight and who this guy should fight. So nothing really betting related at all. And uh, I'm happy I did that, though, because it was kind of more just a hobby. I obviously wasn't getting paid for it. And it's something that I got a ton of experience from. And that's what I tell when, a bunch, when, when young guys come to me and young girls and they say, Joe, what can I do to get involved in sports? And it's, well, you have to work for free. You have to do uh, a bunch of stuff to build up experience. You have to make your own experience. And that's kind of what I did. I didn't exactly know I was doing it at the time, but the opportunity for a job at Oddshark came up and I was able to send them this link, say, Hey, here's some experience I have. Here's uh, some proof that I know what I'm talking about, you know, sure. uh, you know, a couple hundred articles or whatever it might've been. And so they were able to read that because uh, all my friends know about sports, right? And a ton of people know about sports, but you have to be able to prove that you have, you're able to write first of all, or speak or appear on camera. And, you know, you just, you need some proof. Knowing a lot about sports just isn't good enough. So, uh, so like I said, yeah. So after school, I did a couple programs in college and uh, I did that on the side and I bounced around from a couple different marketing and public relations jobs. And then this, uh, job at odd shark kind of uh fell into my lap it was kind of funny how it worked out and uh i've been with the company for uh, a little bit over five years now yeah you've had a really great run at it joe and um hoot ballers again we're talking with joe osborne of oddshark.com um so one of my favorite things and i got them pulled up right here in front of me and uh you know, I'm kind of getting off the cuff a little bit because I got some actual structured questions to ask you. Oh, I'm just, whatever. Like I said, I'm just, I'm letting them fly. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously your first five inning article, um, you know, I, it's good stuff. I've referred to it. And then your first quarter NBA stuff, yeah. um, phenomenal, phenomenal work. And I, um, you know, I, I use that in my handicapping a lot. Um, it's very accessible. A, I think that's the most important thing and the most greatest thing about y'all's work. And B, um, you can tell, you know, the efforts in there and it's uh, factual and um, it's very helpful. Um, now you talked about the job opening and how you've been with um, Odd Shark here for going on well, about half a decade. Yeah. And so when Guys and Bets started, what were your initial thoughts? You know, how did you foresee the trajectory of that show and that project taking off or going? Was that your really first big uh, attempt at it? Well, guys and bets, it started a little bit differently. And this is when I wasn't really involved in an on-camera role for the job. And it was more of a, a sports betting talk show almost, right? And along the way, Hey, we kind of discovered that, you know, people are more or less just interested in, in the picks for, you know, actionable content, things that they can uh, uh, participate in that day or that weekend, right? Like, if you look at sports content right now, like, like there's uh, sports betting content, it's getting watered down a little bit. Some people are really good at it, but, you know, there's a hundred different people talking MVP odds and an offensive rookie of the year and all that type of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we discovered that kind of the masses, they, they just want the picks. So we kind of switched to show up the format to kind of make that the focus of it. And, uh, you know, we got a couple of different guys who are good in a bunch of different areas. I like to do major league baseball, as you know, and NBA and NFL, of course. And we have uh, Ian's our big golf guy, knows yeah. some hockey. Ninja knows soccer. He's a little bit of baseball. Um, Ian's a big college basketball guy as, as well. And, and, and that kind of what that's what draws people in, I guess, right, is the picks. We know what we're talking about. And uh, a little bit of entertainment, too. I, I think maybe we think we're a little bit funny. Uh, but, uh, 
Uh, yeah, and it's picks with actual factual reasons to back them up. Like, like sometimes people are doing these pick shows and they're just like, yeah, I'm taking this team because they've been playing well lately. Well, yeah. their opponent has not been playing well lately. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, can you provide some examples of maybe strengths versus weaknesses, you know, well, specific to the well, spread or, or the total? Any, yeah. And, you know, to each their own. Um, some people, not everyone – my content probably isn't everyone's cup of tea, but uh, you know, people seem to like what we're doing. I think for the most part. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it's been a pretty good run so far and we all have an absolute blast doing the show. Well, it's a definite viewership that I appreciate. Uh, it's great quality cinema, uh, Ebert and Roper, uh, <laughs> two, two, <laughs> two thumbs up. So um, I think I speak for at least 98% of the masses, um, you know, and uh, we've had a couple little interactions on Twitter, you know, just like you've liked a couple of my tweets and, you know, little guys like us, we remember stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, you know, one of my favorite things that you put out on Twitter is the greasy money ah, line yes. par- parlay. Uh, ah, just, yes. And the, the masses of people are gathering and there's riots <laughs> and looters and, uh yeah no that's that's good stuff there yeah it Um, kind of fell apart on me this past college i don't know college football season was whack because that i'm not a big college football better in terms of spreads and totals but that was the the general makeup of the greasy money line parlay just because you had so many options but it kind of uh we had a lot of really big upsets uh, in college football this year so it kind of got off to a rocky start but I, yeah. I look forward to returning it when uh, you know hopefully things will be back to normal with fans in attendance and uh, it, it can take off again here in the fall yeah no I'm looking forward to it as well college football all of it the greasy the greasiness all of it yeah um, so I just kind of you know and you hinted at it too you know when folks come and ask you like you know well, how do I get into sports and mm. of course I just hinted at it with you know the little guy and then that and with even with you being as big as you are within the sports betting industry and the community um, you know you still take time to do shows like this one um, which are much appreciated you're confident you're outgoing how do you balance that confidence with humbleness and kindness in order to not overlook you know, said little guys or, you know, people who are just genuinely interested in, you know, trying to chase down a little of what you got. Sure. Well, I I don't think I'm a big deal at all to be be completely (laughs) honest, you know, like, like big picture. I I think I have like 55,000 Twitter followers in in the big picture of sports content. That's, that's not very much at all, but you know, I've been, been able to, uh, to gain a a little bit of an audience and I've had a fun time doing it. And, And basically I'm just myself, man. Like, I don't think I don't take things too serious. And I know what I'm good at. Like, you're not going to log on to my Twitter feed and see me posting my views on uh, different things going on uh, uh, in regards to politics and Mm. social justice. uh, Because people don't want that from me, right? So I'm not going to be one of these people. And and I I try to be optimistic, too, right? Like, we live in a, a culture where everyone complains about cancel culture. I complain about complain culture because everyone's always complaining about something and I'm guilty of it sometimes too. Right. But I I, I don't really take things too serious, I guess. You know what I mean? I don't, don't sweat the small stuff and uh, you know, I I know what I'm good at. So I, I just be myself and have a little bit of fun. And that's what I think people sometimes lose sight of that, that the sports betting thing and social media it's supposed to be for fun. It's supposed to be for entertainment. And sometimes it turns into, you know, it can be a bit stressful or whatever. You have people telling you off from time to time. So sometimes you put the phone down for the night or whatever. But yeah, for, for the most part, I just try to have fun with it. It's sports, right? So right. It's, it's supposed to be fun. For the fact of the matter is, you know, we, A, we have sports. So we should honestly just be mm. thankful right now. Um, you know, that's something I try to remind the listeners of this show uh, and myself, because, you know, like you said, we all have a complaint culture of some sort within our, uh, within our world, our lives. And uh, sometimes I complain when the Padres are playing the pirates and I can't figure out an angle on it, but then I realize, Hey, they're playing. So. 
Well, tonight the angle would have been to fade Blake Snell, who couldn't get out of the first inning. Uh, I have Snell on my fantasy team, and he lasted uh, two-thirds of an inning against oh the Pirates, goodness. who are one of the worst teams versus uh, left-handed pitching go figure. So Without uh, Brian Hayes. Yeah, so uh, a tough one to figure out there uh, with, with the Padres in, uh, in Pittsburgh tonight. But that, that's sports betting, right? If it was yeah. as easy as uh, – as what we see on paper, then we'd all be millionaires. Yes. It would be so much better if it was that way. But the grind is what actually is, you know, something that I enjoy because I, I love putting in effort into my content and, you know, trying to find the edge and doing my game write-ups and game predictions and how I see the uh, the games possibly playing out. Um, I wanted to ask you, because, you know, we were going to talk about your first five baseball stuff a little deeper. Sure. What, um, and I'm going to kind of flip it on the opposite end of the baseball spectrum here. What are some bullpens that you thought were going to be absolutely garbage coming into this season? You can just throw one out there if you want, but just, you know, is there a bullpen that's impressed you so far? Well, the Blue Jays are doing yeah. pretty good. I'm surprised to see. I think uh, so. The two stats that I look at that most people will look at if you're judging pitchers is ERA and FIP. Now, the, the hardcore baseball snobs don't like ERA, and I do admit that it is a flawed stat, but FIP is a bit of a flawed stat too. Like if you're allowing hard contact to the gap, uh, you know, that's not going to show up in, in your, your FIP stat. But, mm-hmm. uh, if you if you look at a couple of the top bullpens so far, like Toronto ranks third overall in ERA, and that's after Kirby Yates, who was supposed to be their closer, went down. So maybe this is just a bit of a weird outlier we're seeing to start the season. I think we're only 10 games in at this point. So uh, that number could fall dramatically. And uh, that would be the biggest surprise as far as bullpens are concerned. It's kind of nice to see the Phillies in the top 10 in ERA mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. After they had such like a, just a brutal, that was their complete downfall. Like they were, they were in the thick of uh, the playoff hunt there last year, but their bullpen was just God awful. Like you could only bet them first five if you wanted to back the Phillies. They were, way, um, it was like, Worse since 19 teens bullpen numbers, if I remember right. Um, they were putting up some bad numbers last year. Yeah, they were they were just flat out atrocious. So, uh, so I'm a Blue Jays fan here, but it's kind of the opposite of them. They've been uh, bought near the bottom of the league in OPS so far, but uh, but the bullpen's doing good. So if, if they can get the hitting going, uh, you know, maybe they can start picking up a couple extra W's here. Yeah. And the last week or so, I've mentioned it a couple times. I love the addition of Marcus Simeon, just the, uh, you know, improvement and wall-like defense built behind, you know, your starting pitchers. Um, No true big-time weaknesses right there on the infield. No glaring stuff right now. Just like you said, got to get on base, do a little more uh, successful in that regard. Um, I'm enjoying – your Blue Jays this season. Uh, currently up 2 0 on the Yankees, by the way. Um, we're recording this six, about seven o'clock central time the night before. So, um, a hot first five team since we were going to talk about first five stuff. And I think they've cooled off a little bit here recently, but the Texas Rangers, yeah. <laughs> um, still keeping a keen eye out on them, Joe, or I mean, are they cooled off enough to where? Uh, just it's just a matter of tracking the numbers um well that's the thing with baseball right because we're only 10 games in like I said and I kind of made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to go too wild here to start the my baseball betting season off because I usually like to work with a two-week sample size throughout the season when I'm handicapping games because I think that kind of it gives you a pretty good picture of how the teams are performing, both, you know, hitting versus righties and lefties and how the bullpen's been doing. So I kind of like to ride the wave of hot and cold streaks and play different outliers against against each other. So I haven't really necessarily been pounding any teams or playing any trends yet to start the season just because I want to see if they're going to even out. 
But uh, the Rangers, absolutely a bit of a surprise there. And the first five money line, uh, four, five, and one, they're up about 4.3 units on the first five. But the biggest surprise and the most profitable first five team as of uh, this conversation here on Tuesday night, the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. They're they're up almost six units uh, through 10 games on the first five money line. Then their uh, their bullpen's letting them down. But – you know, the Tigers, it seems like they've been rebuilding forever now. So maybe uh, they're starting to see some, uh, they'll start to see some results. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by Granger for the ones who get it done. Yeah, um, it was um, a team that I talked about that I wrote about in our preview article for the baseball season. And in that central division, AL Central, you know, they were one of the teams that amongst, you know, below the Royals, obviously, I think the Royals improved the most in that division from last year's team to this year's team. But Detroit, you know, they, they improved in a ton of different very, very weak spots um, from last year. So um, they're playing Houston tonight. That's a game I actually have a play on. And I was looking at over nine. Houston's offense is just absolutely rolling. They they hit lefties really well. I'm not sure if I trust yeah. Matthew Boyd. But they got four guys that, you know, come season end, I wouldn't be shocked if they were still over the 350 line for hitting against lefties. Yeah, the Astros, you, you know, I think some people wanted to maybe write them off a little bit coming into the season, but their pitching staff, they uh, they got some good young pitchers, and the offense is still really good. The defensive uh, infield is, is pretty good, too. You know, I was watching them. I had a first five bet on them the other night, I think last Thursday, perhaps, against Oakland, and uh, I was watching them, and I said, you know what? this team might be awesome this year. Yeah. And if you think about that division they're in, the Oakland A's have been one of the biggest disappointments so far. Yeah. So who knows if they're going to bounce back, right? And then uh, I don't think anyone's expecting a whole lot of out of the Rangers, the uh, the Angels. I kind of look at the Angels as the most top-heavy team in baseball. I don't think that they – they have a, a few average to above-average starting pitchers, but – Injury issues, right? Anthony Rendon's already on the IL. Uh, let, let's hope Otani can stay healthy for a exactly. season, right? Because people want to see what he's going to do. But yeah, I, I think that division, it's, it's still Houston's to lose. And uh, I think that they still have, they're going to be a, a big time pitcher away, I think, starting pitcher away. But what's to say they can't make a deal for someone at the deadline, right? Exactly. Um, you know, not to be that guy, but I, I was watching the guys and bets uh, episode and I, uh, it was after one of the recent um, Houston games and to just kind of piggyback your point. Um, I, I've honestly picked them to win the world series this year, Joe. Uh, you know, I, Dusty Baker, you know, the, these guys are battle tested. Sure. They lost, sure. you know, uh, Springer in the off season, but we're not seeing a huge, huge, huge dip right now. It might hurt later in the season, you know, once we get in the dog days of summer. But you know, um, if they keep winning the games, they gotta. And you know, people forget that I think three out of the last four years the CS has gone through uh, Houston. So um, right now, I mean, it's still through Houston in my opinion. So. Yeah, and we saw them in the playoffs last year, right? I, th- I think they kind of snuck in or whatever, and people yeah. thought Swept people kind of won two series. Well, people want to write them off, and they almost beat Tampa Bay too. I was kind of rooting for them. I, I'm kind of a, a weird sports fan where if everyone hates a team, then I'll like them, unless it's like the Yankees or something like that. But I rem- like when LeBron went to play for Miami, everyone automatically hated <laughs> them, and that made me like them. So. Everyone going against the Astros last year, it made me kind of like them once the Blue Jays went out there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, they still have just a ton of talent there. And maybe the guys are still playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And 
you know, it doesn't look like they're missing George Springer too much. The Blue Jays are because he hasn't had an at bat yet for <laughs> yeah, them here. Yeah. This regular they're season. missing him more than the Astros are. <laughs> yeah. So if they can get, uh, you know, the Kyle Tuckers of the world going, I, I think that they're going to be one of the better teams in baseball for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, there was another team that I was a real big fan of, and I know you really like starting pitch. You, you just like pitching. Uh, so Cincinnati is a, is a team that I really like. Um, I think, and I, I, I'm just going to hammer this point home multiple times. So I'm sorry, listeners, but you know, addition by subtraction, getting Freddie Galvis out of that lineup and getting a much better bat, a much more, yeah. uh, more efficient player in there is huge. And then, you know, you got a guy like Johnny India who got that opportunity um, with his spring performance. So really like what they're doing. This matchup against the Giants is a really, really good series that I'm excited for. Poor Kevin Gosman, though. His team, just speaking of bullpens, uh, <laughs> man, they can't do him a favor. Yeah, the Giants are one of these teams. It's kind of like they've been stuck between a rebuild and actually competing here for a while now and it was very smart of them not to bring back Madison Baumgartner I thought but yeah you take a look at the Reds man and uh very hot start right seven and three a run differential a plus 23 which ties them for the best mark in the league with, mm. with the Dodgers so far and uh you know Luis Castillo got off to a rough start in his season debut but then he bounced back in his second start he actually goes tonight in San Francisco I took the first five under four in that game, primarily because San Francisco, 10 games in, they've gone under nine, uh, nine of the 10 first five uh, in first five so far yeah. this season. So one of the hotter trends. And I think it makes sense with Castillo and Gosman going against each other. Pretty decent starting pitching matchup right there. But Cincinnati, man, I, I don't know. I think we might see the bats cool off. Uh, the last three games since they're on this West Coast road trip, Six total runs in three games, I think it is. So maybe they'll cool off a little bit. But Cincinnati's a team I was really high on last season. And the Bats fell asleep on them in the playoffs there, unfortunately. But Sonny Gray, he's going to be joining the rotation here, I think, towards the end of the month, maybe. I think. I'm not quite sure when he's coming back. But he was fantastic last year, too. So you have him and Castillo, a very good one-two punch at the top of the rotation. If the hitting, it'd be hard to keep pace with what they've done. But if right. the hitting can be better than last season, then I think they're going to be in pretty good shape within that division. Yeah. And I was expecting a lot of uh, downtick, you know, within that division. Uh, personally, I'm a Cubs fan. Um, I think that's number nine, guys. Um, sorry, I, I, we track every time I say I'm a Cubs fan throughout the season. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's not that funny, but it's something we do. Um, and then – the Brewers w- was a team that I was high on that division. I picked them to win it. Uh, St. Louis, sure, they added Arenado, but um, where where else did they really get better? Um, and then they also lost a couple of other pieces. But um, I'll, nonetheless, that division has been competitive for the last like four or five years. I love the Brewers getting low cane back um because he just adds a certain element to that team um it's he's a great veteran to have and he's still got a lot of left in the tank and he had all last year to be off so uh, as far as baseball years go he is uh he added one he got the plus one so um let's talk some first quarter nba stuff real quick i want to just pick your brain on that because this is hoop ball and yes we are primarily a nba website but you know they they make they make a little room for me because I love college sports and baseball and stuff so much. So, <laughs> um, the first quarter stuff, yeah, yeah. I've been using it for a couple of years now. How, how did you figure out that that was an angle you really liked? Did you find minimal risk or more minimalized risk in it? Uh, well, it, it's one of these markets where teams go on these just wild runs that you really don't see with full game betting. And if they do, like the few times a year, like uh, I think it was earlier in the season where the Utah Jazz had covered in, what was it, 16 or 17 straight games, something along those lines, right? Uh They just went on this wild run. But you see runs like that in the first quarter and the first half pretty frequently throughout the season on the spread. Uh, The Phoenix Suns at one point, I think they had covered 13 straight at home or something of that nature. 
Uh, the New York Knicks were a fantastic, and they're still pretty good at first half bet. But but you see these teams go on these wild runs, and you see trends that you can apps uh, actually rely on, right? Like I always say that you do have to be able to back up trends with some stats, right? Like I'm not the type of guy that just blindly plays trends. I was like that when I was new into the sports betting industry, but you kind of do get burned by those. But yeah, it, it's kind of like a niche market too that. Uh, uh, especially the first quarter bets, you know, you're in and out in 12 minutes of action, right? As opposed to needing yeah. to watch the entire game. Sometimes it's two crappy teams, right? Like, you know, if uh, I, I don't know who would be an example here, but if the the, the Kings like are playing the Spurs or something like that. Yeah. yeah, not the most exhilarating game, but if you have a first quarter bet, you know, it can uh, it can be kind of fun, right? So, yeah, there's definitely some spots and some great angles there in uh in first quarter betting and first half that i that i love to play and uh it's fun to track throughout the season as well awesome um like i said just the insight that the listeners can get on it because it's something that i've been digging into for quite a while um but it's all about creating that value and two two uh, priority uh principles that i operate with um is the fact that we are looking for conviction and value within bets that we place. And like you said, just going blindly off trends like you used to as a youngster, I, I've done that, you know, and I'm still very much so in my infancy of, you know, sports betting and capping and being in this industry. So, you know, it's all a learning curve. And that's why having uh, tools out there like what you and Odd Shark provide is, you know, just very, very helpful for, uh, you know, sports betters and curators alike. So, Joe, I wanted to get your opinion on a couple of games, and then I can get you out of here if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. We can get a little scrub on Wednesday going, and um, we'll talk a little uh, NBA and maybe uh, one MLB, two MLB games or something. We'll just throw in some angles that maybe we like tomorrow. Sure. All righty. So there was a couple that I was looking at. And I'll just get your opinion on. So I made the bold declaration and listeners, I've got some crow to eat and I've got, you know, I've got to come out and be forward with you. I haven't hit every single game this year. I think I've missed one or two, but I I made it to where, so I I told myself and I I've written about it, but I'm making a play on every Royals and every Red Sox game in the one sixty two. I just liked the teams coming into these season, this season. I wrote about them, did some previews on prospects that they have and some, you know, just stuff that they got going on. Um, tomorrow, Nathan Eovaldi. Well, I guess I could say today because this is technically Wednesday show, but y'all get it. You know what, what I, what's happening. Um, Nathan Eovaldi, early season success. Um, hopefully he doesn't hit the wall right here because I am backing – the uh, Red Sox against Minnesota and Kenta Maeda. And I know this is a stupid thing to do because <laughs> Kenta Maeda is so good. So I may actually retract and redact that Boston play and find something with more value and weave into maybe like a first five angle or a team total sure. for Boston. So Nate did great. Um, yeah. But the thing is both teams have been really good versus right-handed pitching so far yeah. this season and both bullpens have been decent too. So for me, it's going to come down to like in situations like that, it's probably a stay away for me to be completely honest, but if I needed to bet, it's going to come down to where the value is. So I'm trying to bring up the lines here right now. I've got one I can toss at you real quick while you over two and a half Boston team total minus one fifteen. over two and a half. Yeah. That's hey man, that's a pretty good spot. And Boston's on the road tomorrow too, so I don't like playing over on team totals for the home team because there's a such possibility that they might not hit in the bottom of the ninth, right? Ooh, so man, I've, I and, forgot about that. That's yeah, a, thank you, Joe. Thank you. I've been burned by that a yeah. lot. So I used to wow, play thank you a lot more. So yeah, so through no fault of your own, you you might be dead on or or close with your handicap, but there's a chance that, that they're only going to get up eight times instead of nine, and that mm. makes a pretty big difference, right? Yeah, three so, bats less. I mean. Yeah, so I, I typically only play the uh, team totals for for road teams, especially if I'm on the over. 
But uh, tomorrow's game, let me see here. Is there a lineup? There's no line available yet, of course. But I'm assuming the Red Sox are going to be the underdog in that one. And probably not going to be a bad play, right? Like, it's something I'd have to look into a lot more. I'd like to see what each guy's uh, history is versus uh, the two lineups, which is something that I do like to look at. And uh, But, yeah, the Red Sox... I don't think a lot of people expected too much out of them coming into the season. I certainly didn't. <laughs> and uh, uh, So here we are. They're off to a pretty good start. So I, I think the Red Sox could be a pretty good underdog in that situation where uh, the teams look to be even in a lot of spots. Yeah. Well, and like you said, I've heard you say it before, but, you know, a really bad team can be a really great team depending on how they're pitching is that day well look and, at the the pirates tonight i don't know if they're going to be able to finish the job but uh, uh i think the padres were the biggest favorite of the day around minus 250 or something yeah. like that and yeah. snow couldn't get out of the first inning yeah dodgers were minus 235 padres were minus 250 252 uh, something wow. like that that's just wild um i was just looking because you got me curious I, I pulled up the minnesota batters history against eovaldi Mm. And um, the batter that has the most at bats against him is Max Kepler with eight. He's got two dingers, three ribbies, and he's hitting 375 off of them. Okay. So maybe like a Max Kepler uh, hit prop or something in there. Yeah, that might be worth a look. Absolutely. So, um, and then I also saw Josh Donaldson and Nelly Cruz will most likely be out. So that's something to keep an eye out on also. If yeah, it's want. unfortunate uh, Donaldson can't stay healthy. Obviously, as a big Blue Jays fan, uh, he holds a, a special place in uh, many Blue Jays fans' hearts because he was a big part of the run that saw the Blue Jays get to the ALCS a couple of years in a row there. And uh, he can't stay healthy, unfortunately. So we'll keep the fingers crossed that he can get back on the field and stay there throughout uh, most of the season. Yeah, he's just a really special talent in, in, a, in the weirdest way. <laughs> you know he's just um he he he's one of those kind of like charlie blackman's where it's just like how are you this great at the sport um yeah yeah um well, blackman obviously having a down year but uh so um joe i wanted to you know throw it over to your control if you want and if you don't and i hate to put you on the spot i don't think i put this in the show notes but hey if you got a matchup that you're looking at you can give a call out to uh for baseball go for it. I'm not sure if you're a day of guy with your research or if you just want to drive a point home about something, uh, just would love a nugget from you for this upcoming MLB uh, thing to keep an eye on. Yeah. uh, Like I said, I I don't have any plays yet for tomorrow. I haven't dug too much into it, but when I handicap games, especially when you get later into the season, like past the all-star break, I think recent form carries a lot of weight both in forms of starting pitching relievers and how teams hit, you know, because teams and players are streaky. So I recommend uh, finding a more, a smaller sample size to look at when you are handicapping stats, if you are a stats based handicapper, because if you're in the middle of August and if you're looking at stats for the full season, which goes back to April 1st, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, I don't think, right? Like for the NBA, I use a 10-game sample size. And the example I like to use is if you're using full-game stats to handicap the Brooklyn Nets, for example, that makes no sense whatsoever. James Harden wasn't there for a big chunk of the games to start the year. Kevin Durant has been in the lineup for not even half the games. Kyrie has been a a bunch of games, right? So I think recent form uh, carries a lot of weight in handicapping so i do recommend kind of riding the waves of hot and cold streaks of players and teams because teams are constantly especially in the nba they're changing their offensive and defensive philosophies they're changing their rotations maybe they're shooting more threes less threes they're trying to get to the free throw line more they're changing their pace up a little bit so that's just something to keep an eye on and that's something that's been really helpful for me in my handicapping. So that's one thing that I would recommend. And like I said, too, with trends, always try to find some stats to back the trends up. Like it can't just be, oh, well, this team's won nine games in a row. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to bet them to win again. 
Because it may not make sense. They might, if it's baseball, for example, they might be staring some bum that they just called up from AAA who's been getting lit up and it's a spot start desperate situation and they're being offered at awful odds, right? So uh, at the end of the day, the most important number to consider is what the odds are, what the spreads are, what the total is, right? So, um, so yeah, consider a lot. And, you know, some people take this industry a bit too serious and don't realize that, you know, not everyone is out there making or betting thousands of dollars on these games, right? Some mm-hmm. people are just betting ten, twenty, fifty dollars or whatever, trying to get some beer money for the weekend. I don't make my income through uh, revenue from sports betting. I get paid a uh, annual salary from Odd Shark, right? So I am like a lot of uh, you guys. Uh, I'm a recreational better who does it for entertainment, but uh, but at the end of the day, it's you still want to win, right? Absolutely. So, uh, so there is a lot to consider. Try to take your time with it. Sometimes you just feel like betting and you'll just fire off a bunch of bets. And usually that doesn't end very well, uh, in my experience anyways, because it's just kind of throwing darts at, at that point. But yeah, uh, try, try to consider uh, a lot of different things and, and take your time with it. And most importantly, if you're doing it for entertainment, have some fun with it. Yeah, I like to think that there's a little bit of a just a great balance of what I am able to do here as we grow at Hootball and everything. And, uh, you know, obviously would love to be um, just in front of my computer all day doing sports betting, making all my money off sports betting. But you know what? There's uh, different grinds to be had. And uh, like you said, it's uh, to each their own. And the industry, you know, there's a lot to offer within this industry. And what I love about uh, doing this the most, Joe, is the fact that, uh, you know, I like to look at myself as maybe an ambassador, someone that has no idea what sports betting is. You know, I I like to think of myself as a liaison for the sports betting market, you know, as an analyst. And the psychology that goes into the way the numbers move, uh, the markets and all that good stuff, the spreads, what have you. You know, that's the stuff that's really exciting uh, to me as far as handicapping. So there's so much to look into it as far as what you want to try to find a niche in and be successful in. Yeah, 100%. And I'm the same way. Like, uh, I've kind of learned through the NBA course of the NBA season. Last NBA season, I looked at every single possible bet type that you could look at, you know, Full game spread total, parlays, uh, first quarter, first half, every single player prop, team totals. And I need to cut a little bit of that out. So if you could try to find, you know, ask yourself a question. Hey, what am I good at? You know, what am I great at? Or what do I stink at? Maybe eliminate that so that you can focus more on what you're actually good at. Right. I know I suck at live betting. Every time I fire one off, oh, man. <laughs> it yeah, does that, not that, work. That's dangerous because you'll be watching a game and – a lot of time people are just doing that for fun. Right. And you think you have uh, some sort of an edge, but you probably don't, you know, the sports yeah. book knows, knows exactly what they're doing. Or as soon as you fire it off, it's like someone tweaks an ankle and you're like, Oh, well, damn, there it goes. That bet's dead. Yeah. I've um, had every bad beat that you can possibly have. And I've probably lost a few bets due to uh, tweaked ankles for sure. <laughs> <laughs> At least some sort of tweaking. So tweaking, not twerking. Uh, Joe, man, uh, I think this is going to be a real nice bow wrap that we do here at the end. Um, I, I was super excited to have you on the show. Um, honestly, huge, huge honor. Like I said, I'm just glad to continue the, uh, friendliness and the camaraderie of Hootball and, uh, Odd Shark. Um, so again, Thank you so much, man. If there's any, you know, thing else you want to plug here, just take, steal, steal the show for, you know, five to 15 more minutes. You just (laughs) say whatever you want, boss. All right. Well, I don't need that much time, but uh, (laughs) thanks again, man, for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's, it's awesome to come on and talk sports with you. And yeah, just to, to the listeners, follow me on Twitter where you can find most of my stuff at JTFOZ. And we do a show at Odd Shark called Guys and Bets. We have a, a bit of a longer version of the show every Wednesday and Friday. Then on the other days, we do Guys and Bets Quickies, which is just boom, picks, five minutes, in and out, just our favorite plays of the day. 
So you can find that on the Odd Shark uh, YouTube page. So just search Odd Shark over on YouTube. And yeah, that's where you can find most of my work. And uh, I focus mainly on baseball, NFL, NBA, and the UFC, which is uh, which I absolutely love as well. So those are my, my four main sports, but uh, I absolutely love. And like I said, I try not to take it too serious. I try to have some fun and educate and uh, bring a bit of uh, substance to it as well. Substance is always good, unless you overindulge. Then, that, then it's no bueno. One hundred percent. Well, he, like you said, he's at JTFOZ on Twitter. I'm at DALE007, and um, I enjoyed it. I'm sure the listeners did. Again, hoop-ball.com. Go over there, check the premium content out. Get inundated with us. Come get to know us. You know, you get to have awesome shows like this with Joe Osborne. Uh, so. Again, thank you for all the support, the listeners, all the great stuff that we get from you. Um, keep giving us those five-star reviews. It's helping us. Plus, hey, we're looking at giving some cash away. So if you want some free cash, I mean, go for it. Um, follow us. Follow him. Uh, be safe. Be kind. And I am sending you my good vibes and all of my good energies. And with that, today in sports betting is out. This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.